This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm seriously trying not to laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 it, uh, for, okay, so you guys won't have heard this, but there's a countdown before the show starts, and just as he gets to one, he kind of pauses and drags it out a little. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was that was me trying to stretch it out to the time where I actually pressed the go button on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was weird. Yeah, it, it, it's just it. so a little more behind the scenes stuff for you guys to hear. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it is. It has been a week. Uh, before I get into uh, the at least the first uh, news article that I brought forward is um you know as of today we're recording this on Wednesday the 25th of June the same day that federal judges looked at Utah and looked at Indiana and they said you know what this whole gay marriage ban shit you guys got going on fuck you get that out of here and yep. the judge in U- judge for Utah just ruled it unconstitutional which is pretty much the same thing but the the federal judge ruling over Indiana they said, what, what, oh, 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 this is not just unconstitutional, it's illegal, we're not going to go through the whole process, and we just, just struck it down completely. This is like, fuck you, gays should be able to get married, let them get married, if you don't like it, then kiss my ass. <laughs> I'd love so to see that words. as a decision. <laughs> I want to see that. Make me a judge, I will make a decision like that. <laughs> Even if even if it's just like you know a local judge or something, I want to make a decision like that, and word it <laughs> that way. If you don't like it, kiss my ass, because it's a fucking law. <laughs> and I will use the word fucking, just just to sh- make sure people understand. Yes, judges and politicians can and will curse. It is not some horrible thing. They're people too. It's that's all there is to it. <laughs> oh, but yay! Ah. So anyway, to get on to uh, our, our possibly first – I don't know how long it's going to take us. We're kind of winging it for this week as far as our, our articles go. But this first one, we all kind of looked at it and we're like, yeah, we need to talk about it a little bit more. Um, this one is out from uh, Jezebel.com, and the article title – totally clickbait, by the way. Violence against women will end when you sluts get married, says WAPO. For those who don't already know, WAPO is short and for the Washington Post. And this this actually was posted a little earlier in the month, but other things, of course, have to take precedence here and there. we got to pick and choose, and we've only got so much time. Uh, but we're covering it now, and so a lot of you people probably know about the, the stuff already, which we'll go over again in the article, and you'll get to hear our thoughts and make fun of the stupid people because that's <laughs> what we do. Oh. Uh, Now, the article from the Washington Post, which I believe by this time had probably been changed, um, it's an op-ed piece, and the article title reads, One Way to End Violence Against Women? Stop Taking Lovers and Get Married. The data show that hashtag yes all women would be safer hitched to their baby daddies. Okay. I don't know where you're getting that logic except out of your ass, but whatever. Yeah, because there's never spousal abuse. There's, you know, one way or the other. You know, that yeah. never happens, right? Oh, no, no. Married couples never uh, hit each other or, or do anything unpleasant with each other. Yeah, battered wives across the country would like to tell these people to go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? If, if, if You know, hey, you could probably find these people's emails and go go at it. Have at it. <laughs> You know, because they, you know, they have to have public emails because they they write for public paper. They'd have to have a public. Yeah. Email. Oh, so the Washington Post has just published an op-ed entitled "One Way to End Violence Against Women: Stop Taking Lovers and Get Married." The paper later judged, changed the headline. To that, I say, Washington Post, stop posting bullshit and set yourself on fire. <laughs> I, I don't know who wrote this article, but I like her. Yes. I I wish people were on fire a lot. Yes. <laughs> Very common. 
just <laughs> my friend Rachel likes to wish uh, death by pants on people, and I like to wish that they were on fire. So, <laughs> you know, we all have our thing. Yes. Death by pants. Yeah, strangulation with, with the leg of pants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where she came up with that, but that's her favorite way to wish death on people. There you go. I I just mine. I just pull them out of wherever. You know, death by camera stand or, or death by iPad to the face, you know, and that's clearly... But inevitably with you, it involves defenestration. Yes. Like, yes. eventually somebody's getting their ass tossed out a window. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because it is... Defenestration's a fun word. It really <laughs> is. It's fun. I've even taught the kids the meaning of the word. They don't use it, but I, they know what it means. <laughs> well, um, that's half the battle. There you go. Oh. What's, what's the other half? I'm sorry to like this is a totally derail a strain, but <laughs> this is one of those things that has always bothered me. And anybody who answers the question with lasers, you incur my wrath. But <laughs> <laughs> seriously, what the fuck is the other yeah, proper have... use? Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if knowing um, half the battle, then then what's the other half? Probably responsible use yes. i hope no, 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 no. oh god <laughs> all right so less than 48 hours after posting an atrocious column by george will we're in the venerable conservative thought leader who has made a career out of being smugly wrong about everything called being a rape victim a coveted status and then dismissed the college sexual assault crisis as just another made-up thing in obama's america trademark the Washington Post has outdone itself with a column by conservative think tank denizens W. Bradford Wilcox, the director of the National Marriage Project, and Robin Fretwell Wilson, who endlessly beat the but religious liberty drum after New York legalized gay marriage in 2011. That claims, seriously as far as I can gather, the best way for women to avoid violence is to stop slutting around with baby daddies and get married. It's truly breathtaking in its idiocy. I'm sorry for subjecting you all to this, but here we go. And before we get to the quote that she puts here, yeah, that that's another thing that with with George Will that, that that she brought up in this article, rape being a rape victim being a coveted status. Yeah. Really. As, as person who was raped, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. It, it's uh, like, I, no, not even just fuck you. Um. Uh, you might be the first human being that I ever wish rape on. Yeah. If you think it's such Oof. a coveted status, I invite you to try it. Yeah, I, I have, I have dated somebody who was a victim of rape, and while she was, by the time I had started dating her, she was, you know, she was obviously okay enough to be sexually active and be comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. The fact that she still had her issues because of it, yeah, I don't wish that on anybody. And it, and it's, just, and it, you could. You see the pain, you see the hurt, and you see the, the, the just, ah, no. So I, I don't think many people want to go through that. No, no I, I doubt. It, and then they're kind of weird, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's there's all kind of sexual perversion out there, but I doubt anybody wants to be taken against their will and do to do so, things that they don't want. And yeah. I did, oh, that just really how? bothers me. And I, I know that there are some people out there who are going to be like, oh, she's such a hypocrite. I can't believe that she said that. But, you know, there's this thing that a lot of people in the world don't get between the difference between a quote-unquote rape fantasy and being a survivor of rape. Yeah. One of those things you have control over. Yes. The other you do not. Yes, and rape and... isn't about sex. It's about the loss of power. It's about a loss of control. Mm-hmm. And if you think that somebody wants that, no, 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 <laughs> no. 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 That, 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 it, you know, BDSM fantasies and and all of that, where you give control. See, that's the key word: give. It is given and not taken. Okay, well, I'm going to from... derail this conversation right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because okay. You, you don't actually give control. You give consent. Well, yeah. The person, the person in a BDSM relationship who holds the power is, mm, let's see, not the dominant partner. <laughs> Good point. 
That, that, <laughs> I, I, I don't deep into that, not deep, but uh, delve into that too <laughs> much. So, so, you know, so my words are a little off. Thank you for correcting me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're, you know, ah, I don't know where I'm going to go with that. So we're, we're going <laughs> to move on yeah. to the other guys who, who say, oh, yeah, stop sledding around with baby daddies. Right. Because what? Because a woman has a sexy, healthy sexuality. She wants to go and bang everybody that she wants. Basically, a female version of me who would basically fuck anything that said yes. Well, any person that says yes. Let me, let me, let me clarify there. Uh, no, Apparently, you would still only fuck any woman who says yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see my point. <laughs> You know, yes. apparently to these guys, it, it it's so wrong, and it is it is so totally the the cause of all of all of this violence against women because apparently, you know, a woman being open with her sexuality and assertive with her sexuality means she needs to get her ass kicked, which is totally not true. Well, so there's an interesting statistic that came out uh, earlier this week. From, I don't know who actually did this the survey, um, but I actually saw it through Slate, and uh, it turns out that more people are single parents um, than there are traditional families in the United States. Oh, really? It is it is actually more common um, to come from a single family home than it is to come from um, a traditional mother father. Yeah. 2.5 kids in a dog home. Hmm. Um, and let's see. Do I think that that means that the majority of women in the United States are being battered? No. Oh, hell no. <laughs> in fact, in fact... You know, it's, it's like, take a look at history here. Um, you know, people used to get married not out of you know, the desire to be married or because they loved one another, but it was an arrangement. Yeah, arranged marriage. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it was have kids, um, pass down the, the family line, and that was pretty much it, you know? It, well, it was also basically like... Factor into it. It was, it was also basically like, along with, you know, my my daughter, my, you know, the woman that you're, you're married, here's a... Uh, this land that's attached to her, that was attached to her family, that yeah. she, you know, that comes along with her. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and yes, the huge tracts of land from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, that is meant to be a very historical double entendre. Because, you know, as you said, historically, the women, yes. land came with the women. She also mm -hmm. happened to be very busty. If, I, if, if this is your first time getting the joke, I'm sorry, I had to explain it to you. <laughs> oh. But if you got the joke and you were annoyed that I explained it to you, good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, you know, it seems a little odd to me that it's like, oh, well, you know, now being married is like, first of all, that people can't figure out that there was a difference between you know, marriage a hundred years ago and marriage today yeah. and, and how people choose to spend their lives. You know, people don't have to stay married any mar anymore, so they don't. And that doesn't mean that everybody in marriages way back when were happy about it. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. You know, there was probably, uh, well, no, there was certainly absolutely positively more spousal abuse mm -hmm. in marriages previously than there is now yeah. because it was encouraged. Oh, yeah. Um, your wife's out of life, you learned... your Dan's banker. Yeah. Well, there was actually courses about it. Like, um, so there's this blog, I think it was on Copy Blogger, mm -hmm. which teaches you about how to write good marketing stuff, materials of different sorts. Right. And it talked about the guy who came up with the advertorial which is one of those things that you see that you know is spam on a website, that it looks like it's an article, but it's not really. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, you won't believe this, um, this way that you can get uh, car insurance for nearly free in Illinois or whatever. Oh, uh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. 
And, and it, it turns out that it's an advertisement that's just um, displaying itself as an article. And that's how a lot of old advertisements were. And there was this um, booklet that you could sign up to have sent to your house that was basically why you should beat your wife. Yeah, because... And, oh. and it, it showed an oh, image nice. of, yeah, of a man with, his, with the, his wife over his knee with his hand raised in the air ready to spank her. <laughs> yeah, and, and not in the fun, sexy way either. No, no, it was like, you know, why you should beat your wife to keep her in line. Are you one of those newfangled people who stop beating your wife? Well, here's what you're doing wrong. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to look at that, I'll snark at it, then I'll set it on fire. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So the, the quote that she puts in here, the social media outpouring makes it clear that some men pose a real threat to the physical and psychic welfare of women and girls. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the psychic welfare. Yes. Apparently, There are not... no rails on this for this train anymore. It's like... <laughs> It's not even me derailing it anymore. It's the, actually the the article writers. <laughs> yeah, it's like psychic welfare. Apparently, no, Gonzo we're headed to Jupiter at this point. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, you know, Gonzo and I, if, if you take this at face value, that 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 we could possibly be a real threat to Holly's psychic welfare. I guess suppressing her her psychic power somehow. I think anybody who knows us well would know that I pose a much greater threat to you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We'll fuck you guys up. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with if, if, if psychic powers were a thing, you, yours would probably be stronger than both of ours. <laughs> oh. I, I, I just love it. It's just like... There's no greater threat to the telekinetic abilities of women than men. I mean, I oh. Wow. So wait a second. Does that make lesbians really powerful? <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. Magna and Omega. Oh my god. Those two. Would... Oh god. They are the ones with the power. Yes. They just won't let it. They they just they just haven't let it uh, let it on yet because they're trying to lull us into a false sense of security. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, yeah, I, lesbian porn, it's all a way to, like, <laughs> attack you guys psychically. Oh, no! <laughs> and, and by attacking us psychically, you, you parade the stuff, you parade yourselves out there, and, and you do the sex thing, and the psychic, quote-unquote, attack is really just giving us boners. You know, and, and of course, we we are so we are supposedly so 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 weak minded that if we have a boner, we immediately have to go run to the first private space, or if you're in Florida, you could just do it anywhere and just jack off until you're done. Well, I don't think you're supposed to do it anywhere. I think it's just that if you live in Florida, you will do it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, oh god. Oh. So, yeah, lesbian psychic powers, there you go. <laughs> lesbian psychic powers activate. Yes! <laughs> Title for the episode! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I want to get Hagen and Omega shirts with just a giant letter L on them. <laughs> yes! We must do this. What's that stand for? Lesbian. <laughs> yes. And you I'm know wonder what? lesbian. And you know, in in, in terms of, of podcast recording, my next lesbian talk is with Omega. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I, I hope she's listening it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun show. It's gonna be fun. Ah, but obscured in the public conversation about the violence against women is the fact that some other men are more likely to protect women directly and indirectly from the threat of male violence. Married biological fathers. And fuck you too, because I am not a married biological father. I am a single, child-free, fat fuck. And you know what? If I see a guy, you know, and, and this really extends to pretty much anybody. But in this case in particular, if I were to see some guy go after a woman and she's definitely at a disadvantage in some of some sort, I would do my best to try and help. 
Well, even, even if, if it gets me killed, then, you know, okay, it gets me killed, but as long as she's okay. I mean, I would at least, I would at least try. And just married biological fathers, really? Again, yeah, they're going... the only ones with the protective instinct. I mean, the, that's the only possible way that you could ever, ever develop a protective instinct for someone you care about is to oh. get married and have kids and... Yeah, because that just that just turns on the gene that that activates whatever it yeah, is that because, makes us brave. Because we've never been protective of our friends, our our our, our girlfriends, current and. I was ex- in a show once with a girl who um, was getting pursued by this guy, and she had a boyfriend, and she just really wasn't interested. And he would not leave her alone, and he would not leave her alone, and he would not leave her alone. And I'm doing a pass through. And I come off stage left, and she's trying to walk away from him, and he grabs her by the arm and wrenches it behind her back. Oh, hell no. So, yeah. Whoa. So here's the story of the one and only time I've ever been physically violent with another human being. I picked him up by the neck. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and Fuck. shoved him against the wall. Wow. I don't do it. Yeah. I was pissed. I have never, ever in my life been that angry at another human being. And, like, I was shaking. I was so mad. I was like, no. <laughs> like, just no. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I I'm sure that I said something to him at the time. And I dropped him. And he yeah. ran. Yeah. <laughs> and to him, I would. Probably... Yeah, I would run, too. Um... Yeah. I was in high school at the time, so I had to go home and tell my parents, by the way, if his mom calls, um, I didn't hurt him. I just scared the ever-living fuck out of him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But this is what happened, and so now you know why I did it. And my dad was like, yeah, that's cool. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? Good on you. Now, the thing was, his mother was my advisor and my French teacher. Uh Oh, oh boy! Okay. At the end of the year, she sends me a note thanking me for looking out for her son. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I get, I get. He had been kicked out of other schools previously. I get the impression that she found out what happened and then just never said anything about it. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! But yeah, he almost broke this girl's arm. So. Well, you almost break his neck, and and I'm I'm just imagining what it was like on his end. You know, being held up by the neck. <laughs> By, by by somebody. Yeah, well, and, and I'm not, and they're, and they're, guys, I'm not a very big girl. I'm I'm pretty short, really. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. he just happened to be shorter. <laughs> there you go. But but it's not even that. It's not even that. It's the fact that what he was probably hearing at the time must have sounded like the bowels of hell coming through your throat. <laughs> I'm I'm imagining that level of anger coming. Yes. From you. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he runs out of the building and we locked him out. And then I get out to my car that night and I just start laughing as I, as I start to get in. Cause I noticed that he's written bitch on the top of my car. <laughs> no. oh. oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no, you wrote in the snow on my car. <laughs> oh, no. I could oh, just, fl- just easily brush that away. Oh, no. Yeah. He had also mooned us at one point, too, which was funny, because it's like, he's outside in the snow. <laughs> somebody let him in. I don't know who, but it was like, really, you want to bare your ass to us when it's literally freezing out? Good call. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Hope, hope you like uh, scrotal frostbite there. Hope you, lo- yeah. hope you enjoy it. Oh. <laughs> so, to get back to the article. Uh, if you're playing a not-all-men drinking game with this column... Your first shot comes in with the second paragraph, and by the end, you'd be dead of alcohol poisoning and despair. Wilson and Wilcox, who I'll henceforth be referring to as Son Cox, to eliminate the redundancy of the will and convey my disdain for the piece of piping heart garbage, are asserting (laughs) that yes, some men hurt women, sure, but some men are not bad. Once women get married, bad men who might hurt them transform magically into good men who will protect them from bad unmarried men who prowl around looking for kids and ladies to rape because that's what we do in our spare time isn't it when we this are just single sounds like the worst advice ever given to a woman yeah if, if he's a horrible guy and an asshole and beats the ever-loving shit out of you just marry him 
<laughs> yeah. Just attach yourself to him wholly and completely. That, that will, will make e- everything. It yeah. will make everything better, and you will never have any problems ever again. And you know what? Even Lifetime movies don't work that way, guys. They just uh. don't. They, they 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 barely even work in like the five dollar romance novels you can get at Walmart. <laughs> just a... not gonna no, just no. That's because they argue men care more about their female partners and kids after they get married because marriage. <laughs> what? Uh, I I would like to point out that every person to ever appear as Mori Povich would like to disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, Mori Povich, Larry, Jerry Springer, um. Uh, Ricky Lake. Um, take your pick of, of your trashy TV talk shows. Yeah. You know. Uh, the pair also seems to believe that in addition to magically turning bad men into good men, marriage covers women with a mithril-like cloak of protection that thwarts other bad men who are out there victimizing single ladies left and right. Holly, for uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm assuming... Are you technically single or, or? Yes, I'm single. Okay, you are single. How often are you victimized by other men? Uh, well, as it turns out, not very often. There you go. <laughs> so I I, I, would... I know that might sound weird to some cocks, but um, yeah, I don't <laughs> walk around my daily life being victimized by men. No, it just doesn't happen. Uh, just sorry. I mean, I mean, I've got two of my cousins are staying here. Uh, both of them are single, and well, one of them never le- really leaves the house, so she doesn't really get. You know, she's not victimized by single guys. In fact, I don't think there's a single guy over eighteen in the house. But my other cousin, she goes out. She works a waitressing job. You know, this high end place over in the next city, and. I have yet to hear stories about her being sexually victimized or victimized – well, victimized in some ways. Like her previous job, she got shafted. But but when it comes to you know, being actual victimized by these bad men, I don't hear about it if it happens. Yeah, I just have one crazy stalker. That's all. Yeah. But that also that crazy stalker is also a mutual stalker of oh, well. Everyone. Who likes to inform yeah. me of other places that he stalks me? By the way, I I don't know if anybody else caught that the other day, but he yeah. <laughs> sent me a message well. to let me know that he was following me on a no, another social media platform. But I was like, oh good, now I can go there and block him <laughs> again. He's not yes. very good at this, is he? <laughs> no, oh, he's oh, he, he sucks. <laughs> he sucks at it. I was uh, like, huh, all right. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. The pair also seems to believe... Okay, I, I went there. Yeah. Because there is a statist- statistical relationship between being married and not being crime victims, therefore the aura of a husband must be the root cause of the statistical association. Of course. Because that's how statistics work. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, no, it's not. It's not how statistics works at all. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh... Uh. To continue on, women are also safer in married homes. As the figure above, derived from a recent Department of Justice study, indicates, married women are the least likely to be victimized by an intimate partner. They're also less likely to be the victims of violent crime in general. Overall, another U.S. Department of Justice study found that never married women are nearly four times more likely to be victims of violent crime compared to married women. The bottom line is that married women are less likely to be raped, assaulted, or robbed than their unmarried peers. Ugh. Or the guys, f- yeah. or you could flip that around and the might be the cause and the effect the other way. Yeah. That yeah. women who are victimized end up not getting married. Exactly. <laughs> and there's also another thing. See, see, they get these studies from people who report this shit. Yeah. A lot of, I'm I'm going to guess uh, and, and admittedly this is a pure guess, I'm going to say maybe at least half. Just, I'm probably off by a, a, a good margin, but I'm going to guess half of these domestic violence victims, men and women, are, just go unreported for whatever reason. 
You know, whether yeah. they have fear or whether it's because, oh, it was just a one-time thing or they think they can change him or her, that sort of thing. Yeah, it turns out if you're in an abusive relationship that you'll make excuses for it because you're being abused and that's how your mind copes with it. Also, so, yeah, there's the whole issue of control and, you know, the abuser being the one in control and scaring the victim into not wanting to say anything. Yeah, that that unfortunately happens. So, yeah, the the report that they picked up from the Department of Justice, you know, the study from there, you know, yeah, that, that may be accurate, but it's only accurate as far as who reported it. So, yeah. They, are, they also argue that married women are more likely to live in better neighborhoods, that kids are less likely to be abused, and more likely to have engaged fathers. Really? <sighs> Let's see. Kids are more likely to have engaged fathers when their fathers are their fathers. Wow, that's shocking. Yeah. Thank you for that <laughs> study. Yes. Gosh, I learned so much. I hope we spent some big bucks on that, because that deserves a big payout. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> really scratching the brain matter on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah very much oh, so. you have a father? I bet he's a better father than a father who isn't there. <laughs> I kind of hope so. Happy Father's Day! Yes! <laughs> oh. Jesus. And married women more likely to live in mar- better neighborhoods? Not necessarily. I've... Well, I mean, there's a certain amount of truth to that, but it's because, of course, they live in better neighborhoods. They have generally two incomes coming in. Yeah, so they can afford it. Yeah. But there it, are some. It's a matter of what you can afford. Yeah, there are some, especially down here. You have a married couple with kids, and you know they're living in the goddamn ghetto because they can't afford anywhere better. So you know, even with two or three or four incomes, which that's a whole economical thing for another time. Oh, it doesn't take a pair of conservative think tank darlings wearing their most blindery. Yeah, blindery, agenda-driven thinking caps on so tightly that it cuts off all circulation to their brains to realize that attributing all of these things to marriage is either stupid or deliberately obtuse. Everything that Sun Cox has dubiously attributed to marriage is actually and solidly associated with wealth. Yeah, wealthy people are more likely to marry, and they're more likely to wait until after they're married to have children. They're also more likely to live in the sort of in the sort of neighborhood where random street crime doesn't happen as often due to the fact that it's full of rich people. (laughs) The children of wealthy couples are more likely to attend better schools and better neighborhoods full of other wealthy people who paid a premium to live in areas without a violent crime problem. And a non-rage, stroke-inducing scholarly works and, excuse me, I misread that, and non-rage, stroke-inducing scholarly works have concluded that the key to reducing violence against women is empower them economically, not get them married off. Victims are much more likely to stay with the partner who physically harms them or their children if they feel like they lack the resources to survive without them. Ding, 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 ding. Yes! (laughs) Thank you! Pretty much, yeah. Yes, exactly. And so if you're in the ghetto, you're in a relationship, and you can't get out, you feel like you're fucked, and that's a problem. I've I've known people who have stayed in abusive relationships mm-hmm. so where they they were concerned that about how their child was being treated because they didn't think that they would be able to support their child on their own. Yeah. And they certainly didn't want to lose their child to their abusive partner. Yeah, definitely. Cuz uh oh wait, wait, this is the country where where what what how many states is it where like if a woman is raped and becomes pregnant, the the rapist can sue for custody? Too many. Yeah. Is just no, no. You you rape somebody and she gets pregnant. Uh, you you know you have no rights, motherfucker. You just don't. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I don't Jesus. I don't care if you would love the kid with 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 presents right. and, well, that's and everything. Like, that's just no. If you break into some place and steal something, um, that doesn't mean that it belongs to you now. Well, yeah, but I I I took it fair and square, so it's mine. Well, but no. No, it was. No. It's, it's like it, it, it's like you 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 can't just walk into somebody's house, take a shit on their carpet, but then oh, I'm gonna walk in and spray Febreze on it every day. Don't worry, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I'm just imagining 
imagining that as like a new Febreze commercial. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> People are blindfolded in their own house, and then the guy drops trow and takes his shit off the carpet. <laughs> oh my god! What is smell? Wait a minute! I don't smell it anymore. Yeah, but but I don't smell it. But why? Why does it? Why? What was that smell? That was so weird. It was just like for a second, and now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and he takes off their blindfold. Oh my god, I had no idea! <laughs> <laughs> and it was oh. right in front of me, too! Wow. <laughs> Breathe. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm broke in the podcast now. We are broken! Uh, finish your drink! <laughs> oh. Um, oh man. Okay, so to continue on, <laughs> in the office. You're never gonna finish this article. <laughs> oh, we're almost there. We are almost there. <laughs> All right. In the author's defense, writers often have no control over the headlines run with their pieces, and Wilson indicated via Twitter that the phrase "baby daddy" wasn't his, nor was the atrocious original headline something he concocted, which is another reason that the Washington Post should consider setting itself on fire. But here's something he is responsible for, a reference to two shitty films, The Burning Bed and Safe Haven, as glibly acknowledged evidence that sometimes abuse occurs in the context of marriage. But you know, shrug the shoulders. The piece ends with a clumsily, dizzily, dipshitty tie-in to Father's Day. So women, if you're the product of a good marriage feel, and feel safer as a consequence, lift a glass to dear old dad this Sunday. Nah, I'm more in the mood to lift my middle finger right now. And I'm right with her. Because the, overall, the, the whole, oh, marriage is this magical thing that will keep you from being abused. No, it's not. It, we've, As we have demonstrated several times, it is not. It, it does not magically make somebody love you. It does, not make, it does not make you magically no longer abusive. And it doesn't magically make you a better person. It also doesn't magically make you good at sex. And it's not magical. You know? No, I mean, it's just, it's it's one of those things that, I mean, back in the old days, it used to be an obligation that, you know, if you were of a certain class, then <clears throat> you were expected to get married, and you were expected to get married to someone who could provide you with land and with and with other things to help make you more important of a person. Mm -hmm. And as we've gone on, that that's changed. Now it's become something that, people do if they really actually genuinely care about each other and they can share with each other. It's not something that is going to just magically make everything better unless, you know, the two of you have actually work towards it. Yeah. Relationships take work. And, and anybody who tries to tell you otherwise that says a relationship or a marriage is magical, holy shit, this is going to be awesome and nothing is ever going to go wrong, they're, they're just lying to themselves and trying to lie to you. Don't buy into it. Oh, so that that is the end of that particular article. And again, this one, this episode, other than that article, which we all agreed, like, yeah, we need to do this. It's kind of flying on the seat of the pants. Um, so what I also found is a little something. Where did I put this? <laughs> um, did, ah, ah, here we go. It's a little countdown list. It kind of taken a different track from where we were. And what the thing is called, I found it on rightwingnews.com. And this, we're going to, we get to make fun of this. Because this is going to be fun. He's going to be fun. And the article is called, 20 Reasons You Wouldn't Want to Live in an America Controlled by Liberals Like Obama. And this was posted, well... By this recording date, four days ago. <laughs> oh, and look, there's a little advertisement trying to pop up, but my ad blocker's on for the site. <laughs> because you may get my hit, you won't get my money, you won't get my ad revenue. So, nah. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so <clears throat> twenty minutes, one minute per reason. Ha! Huh! Average. Nah. <laughs> All right. So it reads as such. 
the only thing more disturbing than the arrogance, incompetence, and lawlessness of Barack Obama. Oh, wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I am doing the wrong voice. I yeah. need to switch my voice. <clears throat> The only thing more disturbing than the arrogance, incompetence, and lawlessness of Barack Obama's administration is that most liberals are perfectly fine with everything he's doing. No, we're not. There are some things he's fucking up we're pissed at him about. It's shocking that there are so many Americans who don't care about the Constitution, the rule of law, or even what happens to the country just as long as someone they agree with ideologically is in charge. Yeah, way, way, way to you know project yourself, buddy. In fact, the only time liberals seem to get really upset these days is if someone criticizes Barack Obama or tries to put any kind of restraint on his power. Want to know how America would look if liberals like Barack Obama had complete control of the country? Oh, I would like to know. I would like to know. I, I think I think it might be a better place, you know, as long as he went back on a couple of things he's done, like the drones and, and, and the and the spy, spying stuff. You know, that kind of stuff. Go back on that. <clears throat> yeah. You know, other than that, you know, hey. Number one, abortion would be the only choice. Almost everything else, including light bulbs, TV, health care plans, cars, and the schools your child goes to would be chosen for you by people in D.C. I think my voice changed a little bit on that one, but oh well. <laughs> I love how they put choice in quotation marks here, too. Like, we don't actually mean this will be a choice. We mean that Washington, D.C. will force you all to get abortion. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're pregnant? Oh, yeah. oh, we already have our quota of babies for this year, so you're, we're going to have to abort. the fuck? <laughs> you know you know what other country does that? I, I, well, okay, I don't know if they go so far as force abortion, but I know China has, at least for a long time, has had limits on how many children you could have because, you know, they're fucking overpopulated over there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> it, it, it <coughs> thing you know you can get in trouble for having too many kids. But I love the, everything else on this list: TV, healthcare plans, bul light bulbs. What? Light bulbs. Yes. This is not a sixty watt. <laughs> you must have the ninety watt. Or you must have you must have the halogen light. Or people come and break your light bulbs and make you buy no buy more. Forbidden. Yeah, because uh, liberals really love the idea of getting rid of, you know, free trade and commerce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're so against that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Number two. You could be sued for failing to warn people that you are about to say something that could conceivably be offensive to women, gays, transsexuals, or minorities. Uh, where? <laughs> I... I, I no. No, people say offensive shit all the time, and rarely is it something that you can sue over, so... Yeah. If it's oh, yeah. right not true, then yeah, you can sue. But if it's just something that's offensive, that's not a suable offense. Doesn't mean you won't get called out on it, doesn't mean you won't be bitched from here to Gibraltar and back over it, but you can't be sued over it. Mm -hmm. That's that's, the, that's just the thing. Oh, yeah. Number three. Every sports fan of teams like the Redskins, Braves, Chiefs, Indians, Blackhawks, and Seminoles would be branded as a bigot, and all of those teams would be forced to change their names. The government, yeah, some of these teams are changing their names, but it, it's not really, a, it's not really the government. From what I'm understanding, it's not really the government sitting there and forcing it to happen. It's people pushing and saying, "Hey, you know what? We're kind of tired of this. This is kind of offensive to us, to us now. Can we get it changed?" And then they go through the channels that way. It's the people going through whatever channels they're supposed to, getting the names changed. It's not the government doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I actually saw an argument that was going on on somebody's Facebook the other day about the Redskins and why they should change their name because there would be a whole slew of other names that you wouldn't be able to call a sports team. So why is Redskins okay? Yeah. And somebody was like, well, but I think when they came up with the name, it was supposed to honor... Uh, somebody who might have been Native American. <laughs> and, and we're like, first of all, they weren't even sure that they were Native American, but they called them Redskin anyway. Do you do you not understand how that already sounds like a bad idea? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you look like you might be Native American, so you're Redskin. Yeah. Just call you Redskin. You're Indian, right? As, as a term of endearment. Yeah, but sure. Try, try you're, calling... You're... Try calling Red Skull a, a red skin. Let's see how let's see how that works out for you. Uh. But then it's like, um, y you know, you understand like usage changes over time. So even if it had 
somehow conceivably one day, I know it hasn't ever been, but <laughs> if it was ever meant in an endearing way as a way to honor this dude, um, that's not how it's interpreted. Yeah. <laughs> so they should probably change their name. Yeah. Just, you know, just something, maybe maybe talk with whoever, whatever group that might be offensive. They, if they really want to honor that group, you know, talk with the group in question. And, and, and if you know what, if the group in question, like in this case Native Americans, if they don't give a shit about it, then you know what, let them keep the name. If the Native Americans are like, okay, you know what, we, we kind of – This was – the friend who posted it is Native American. Yeah. So if, so. So if, if a Native American person – has a problem with it, or, or if they as a whole or the majority of them have a problem with it, yeah, change it. Go ahead. You know, do it. But if they don't give a shit, then who cares? You know? It, it depends on the group that is, you know, offended or allegedly offended, depending on, you know, depending on what's going on at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So number f- number four. We would have open borders, and anyone who walks across would be welcome to sign up as a citizen and collect welfare, food stamps, and social security. What? Mm, no, okay, no. So no. Still got to go through the proper channels, and and you know what? I'm pretty sure that that people would, you know, you know, we could say, yeah, you know, you want to live here? Sure. You just got to go through all these proper channels. You got to be able to do all this shit here. Yeah. You know, so yeah, oh, yeah, would be welcome to sign up as a citizen. Doesn't mean you're going to necessarily be granted citizenship, because you've still got to go through all the hoops. Because it's you, you're moving from one country to another. You're trans. You're 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 Transferring your citizenship over from one country to another. So, yeah, it, it, it's not as easy as that. Oh, yeah. Uh, number f- number five. It would be illegal to say the Pledge of Allegiance or fly an American flag because it might offend people. In what? What? Well, the historical logic. accuracy here. Under God was added to the Pledge of Allegiance. It is not the original wording. That's right. Oh yeah. So I actually remember, uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I saw an, I saw an old Porky Pig cartoon that talked all about the Pledge of Allegiance, mm-hmm. and I distinctly remember, like at the end, he you know he recites the Pledge of Allegiance, and he doesn't include the words "under God," and I was just like, well, that was strange. I mean, he yeah. was, he he left something out there, didn't he? And then, come years later down the pike, I'm like, oh wait, no, that was added. In like the fifties or something. Yep. Yeah, that, that actually reminds me of Cold something. War to show that we weren't godless heathens in yeah. the oh, yeah. in the face of communism. We we're like, well, under God, then yes. Yeah, and you know what? This actually reminds me of a video I saw on Facebook earlier today that that a uh, former family member had posted. It was a link to a Glenn Beck thing of all things, and it was talking about. Um, you know, how, how the, there was like some sort of controversy about kids, you know, singing the song about Barack Obama in school that I listened to it and it sounded more like they were just using a song to teach the kids what the president stands for mm-hmm. and, and what he, he's, you know, he, what he is known for, at least what he's trying to be known for. You know, much like you would sing a song like that for Abe Lincoln or George Washington or even W, you know. You yeah. know, that, that's, it's pretty harmless. But Beck is on there and be like, it's indoctrination and blah, 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 blah. And it's like – and uh, the former family member who posted this posted it. He said that our children can't pray in school or say the Pledge of Allegiance to the America flag and this is allowed. And it's like they can do both. They just <laughs> – you know – and, and 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 as a friend of they, mine, they can't be forced to pray in public school. <laughs> that's right. That's that's the thing. Yeah. You can't be forced to do it. Prayer is not out of school, and you can still say the Pledge of Allegiance. You can also opt not to say it if you yeah, don't want I, to. Yet again, I bring up the fact that I went to school with Jehovah's Witnesses, and yeah, they did not say the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, and and you know what? Does that make them any less patriotic? No, because there is nope. more than one way to show your love for your country. A lot, some of us, we show our love for our country by bitching about it because we want our country to be better. At least nope. I do. Uh, number six: All criticism of black and Hispanic politicians would be shrugged off and treated as racism. No, no, there are plenty of black and Hispanic politicians who um, are just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> 
totally wrong, and, and we criticize them equally. We don't care what your color is. In fact, most of the time, I don't even know what color or, or race or whatever they are when when I bitch about them. Yeah, unless, of... unless there's some sort of scandal where they've, you know, mm-hmm. taken a picture of their dick and sent it to somebody on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Weiner talking about you. Uh... Oh. <laughs> fitting name, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh... Seriously, seriously, your name is Wiener, and you don't think twice about sending someone a dick pic? Like, really? It's like, wow. This, uh... <laughs> Number seven. Government investigations of liberal wrongdoing would be handled by friends, associates, or campaign contributors of the liberal being charged. Project much? Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, it, it's it's. Yeah. See, and what? Like conservatives wouldn't do that if we were run by a conservative government. Oh wait, they yeah. probably did. It, they'd be like, oh no, but it's totally a jury of our peers. Don't you get it? They believe the same things that we do, so they're gonna, you know, they're our peers. Totally understand. They understand. <laughs> yeah. Number okay. Number eight. So many nuclear and coal plants would be shut down that we'd end up with regularly scheduled blackouts in many parts of the country. Um, what they fail to what, what he fails to realize is um, we're looking for alternatives to those. You know, so when they do get shut down eventually in the future, when the conservatives realize, oh shit, we need to shut these down to hopefully save our planet before it's too late. Hopefully, it's not too late at that point. Then it would be replaced with solar power, wind power, probably, you know, hydropower, you know, yeah, stuff Yeah, the majority that's... of my life, I have lived mm, about 10 miles away from a nuclear power plant. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're starting to see windmills in the area for wind energy. But, yeah, um, they, that doesn't mean that they shut down the power plant. You know, first Wednesday of every month, the sirens go off to test, and turns out (laughs) we're using both. Yeah, there you go. And you can even use both. I mean, you kind of have to. you got to kind of, you know, baby steps, you know. You can't just go from one and go immediately to the other without something bad going down. That's why you need to, you know, slowly transition. Uh, Anyone could choose not to work and get a monthly stipend from the state. Well, until the money runs out. See, the thing is, it, 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 this assumes that the people who would get the stipend from the state would just sit on it and hoard it. That's not what people are going to do. If, well, if, it's like, it, it's just a whole bunch of bad assumptions there. It's like, first of all, people who collect unemployment, you, you have to prove that you're looking for work. Hello. <laughs> people, you know, they get audited for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to keep track of it and make sure that you show that you're, you know, because now I've had to apply for unemployment in two different states, and they both said, this is the amount of jobs that you have to apply for every week, and you have to keep proof of it because we can audit you at any time. Yeah. And um, the other thing is you don't really make enough money that you'd want to just sit around and not do anything when you're on unemployment because it would literally be the only thing that you could do. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah I, I had to be on un- unemployment when I lost my job in Indiana, and that was, I think, like $70, $80 per week. Oh, That's God. just, no, no. Yeah. And, you know, around here, in, in, in small little podunk Graceville, that might be okay for some things, and even then you're pushing it. Mm-hmm. But in Indianapolis? <laughs> no. That just doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, number 10. Cities, states, and even well-connected big businesses that spend irresponsibly and go broke could always be bailed out by the federal government. You mean like they are now? Right. So, I, I love this whole idea that we're going to – that liberals will both get rid of business and continue to support big business. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, they really can't make up their mind on this one. It's like, well, you know, we're, we're going to make everything, you know, every specific yeah. thing into a monopoly. But, um, you know, apparently they're still going to be really shitty at doing business and need bailouts. Yeah, because, you know, that's... And we'll help them with that. 
Yeah. Even though we want all of the businesses to fail. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, number eleven. <clears throat> Women would have to get mandatory abortion counseling from Planned Parenthood before giving birth just to make sure they're ready to have a child. Mandatory abortion counseling? What? Even. What? The, the, the hell? Yeah. Uh, so remember, in number one, he put choice in, in quotes beforehand. This... And now it's, it's because we're actually going to, you know, talk you well, into but... having an abortion. But, but Holly, he wasn't serious about that. I mean, you really don't think that it would be a choice, would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Choice. Uh, <laughs> number 12. Conservative talk radio blogs, websites, and especially Fox News would be regulated out of existence and only government-approved media sources would be allowed. Well, okay, if Fox News is regulated out of existence, that means that you know news outlets, media outlets, are regulated to the point to where they cannot blatantly lie to their viewers. Yeah. If they yeah. can't register a trademark, that's a giant lie. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, but you got to use that responsibly. You know, I mean, it, it's it's it's... One of those things, you you know, news is a public service. We and can't get rid of Fox News, though. We can't. It, first of all, it's like a disease. It just grows and spreads and makes you horribly uncomfortable. God damn but... it. Fox News is the chlamydia <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> it does destroy your brain, yes. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever. <laughs> yeah, we got an STD from from. Wait, who is it that runs Fox News? I want to say who is it? Rupert Murdoch or whoever? Yeah. Yeah. Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch, Murdoch gave else. the country an STD. Goddamn it! <laughs> it's called Fox News. <laughs> oh. No, no. Now I forgot where I was. Going. <laughs> I don't even remember either. But... It was like I thought about that for a second, and I was like, wait a second, that's the wrong disease. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I chose a sexually transmitted disease, like, you know, <laughs> I was partway there. Yeah. Oh. Appa apparently, I've been reading too much Fox News. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Number 13. Uh. Christians and conservatives would have to hide their beliefs to get government jobs. Oh, you mean how non-Christians would have to do the same in order to get certain jobs in certain areas? How how atheists would have to hide their atheism just to be able to work somewhere, like say maybe around here. If it's like like I'm an agnostic atheist, I don't know how much of the town actually knows about it or if they actually care. But I'm willing to bet if if I went down to the Piggly Wiggly, in, in fact I might even try go down to the Piggly Wiggly, put in an application, and word gets to them that I am not a Christian. It would it would put them to the test of whether or not they would care. They could surprise me and say, you know what, we'll hire you anyway. I don't give a damn what you believe. Just do the right – just do a good job. Or it could be like this guy is trying to project onto everything else, and they would make my life a living hell. My my sister had a coworker, and my little sister uh, was a Catholic school teacher, and now she teaches at public school. But she had a coworker who had posted on an atheist website, and she was fired for it. Wow. Yeah, fired for doing something in your own private time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Aye. Number 14. The IRS would be allowed to audit people solely for contributing to conservative candidates or being a member of conservative groups. You mean like... Right, because would... the IRS really gives a shit. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like, you know, if, they are, if they're auditing you for something, odds are they're, they've, they've, it's either a random audit or they suspect something. Right. If you... It's like this person doesn't get the IRS, but IRS policy is screw everyone equally. <laughs> we, don't care. we don't care. We're going to fuck you over. We're going to yeah. fuck you. Uh, speaking of fucking, uh, number 15, men who have sex with women who are drinking would be treated as rapists by default. No. If you're just drinking and you're still coercive and, and, and you, you are still in the right frame of mind – then there's no issue. Coherent, you mean? Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you said coerced, and I was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, I, you're definitely not okay if you're coerced into sex. That uh, right. actually constitutes rape. Yeah, that, does. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is my brain going, uh, uh, C word, uh, uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. Ah, damn my brain. 
but, but yeah, um, just everybody, people of the world, if somebody is drunk, legally they cannot consent. Right. Oh, number 16. Merit and even basic competence would be a secondary in importance to hiring people who are the right race or sex for a job. And, of course... Because <laughs> everybody wants to hire incompetent workers. Of course, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if I had a choice between the two of you and, and, and Gonzo was clearly the better candidate, but then some mandate told me to hire Holly just because she's a woman, whether or not she's actually competent... That would... She's an Asian woman. Yeah, she's an Asian woman, and and and. and... I'm, I still got this job, Gonzo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I might be gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm bisexual, so ha. Huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this job is mine. <laughs> I love that you both just went and started one-upping each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah. Number 17. Any child who plays with a toy gun would be considered a potential psychopath and expelled from school. No, no, because, okay, as a liberal person, I think this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, the kid who got kicked out of school for... Eating a pop tart in the shape of a gun, oh, <laughs> or yeah. the kid whose sign name looked like a gun. Which, by the way, I I, look, I watched the sign. It doesn't look like a gun. <laughs> I was like, how did they get a gun out of that? I mean, because by that token, the letter H in sign language also looks like a gun. So it'd be like you could never use the letter H again. Oh no, that does. G G could too. G H. Yeah. And H. You they're, can never spell out ghost. Or, or, or hag, or hop, or whatever. Or holly. I would just be Ollie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, oh shit. You, you would have well, to. Well, I know I couldn't be Holly because an L is like a, pointing a gun in the air. Yeah, so you'd be I. I'd oi. be Oi. <laughs> you'd be Oi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Uh, number 18, Americans would only be allowed to buy tiny, overpriced electric cars that don't work very well. No, we wouldn't, because people, the supply and demand, we would demand better working vehicles, we would demand vehicles that work better, you know, it, you know, yeah, you're going to have some duds, but we're going to, we're going to demand we want vehicles to work better. And you know what? If they're all electric cars, what's the problem? Yeah. You know? And hey, now with uh, you know Tesla Motors giving away, you know, you know, making all our patents uh, free to the public, yeah, we Ooh. probably will start seeing more, uh, you know, advanced electric cars. Yeah, especially with those electric road plate thingies. I call them road plate thingies because that's you know that's what how they're putting them on the road plates. You know that that we had talked. I think you and I talked about it on Thespia talk a little while ago, Holly. The the electric road plates or or, or, or the ah, I forget what the, the solar panel. Oh, yeah, planner. the solar panels. I yes. was like, what? Like, I couldn't decide if you were talking about, like, Google's um, driverless cars or, like, if you meant metal plates like streetcars or yeah, how you meant that. But, yeah. Yeah. It's like, again, brain going. <laughs> well, we've got two more. We've got two more here. Number 19, it would be illegal to oppose gay marriage. <clears throat> right. It, it, yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, people. It's not illegal to oppose it. It's just legal. It's just illegal to make it illegal. Right. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to be for it. <clears throat> but but the law is the law, and the law, the Constitution says, you know what? Everybody has the right to the pursuit of happiness. And by by saying that gay people can't get married, or 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 any person cannot marry somebody of their same gender or sex or however you want to look at it, you know. By saying that, you are denying those people their right to the pursuit of happiness because you think gay people are squicky. And no, that is not a, an excuse. So it, it is still wrong. Uh, number 20, the last one. Guns would be confiscated from everyone except the criminals, the cops, the military, and the bodyguards for the rich liberals. 
No. Right, because, because first of all, liberals are so into gun use. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, wait, so liberals are okay with guns, but only guns that they have? No, that's that's really sort of against <coughs> the general typical idea of liberals' thoughts on gun usage. Yeah, yeah. you would think that they would just that they would just keep guns away from everybody. Yeah. You would think. If that was if, yeah. It's like, wow, so much projection in just that one thing. And if you, if you want to look at it and then make fun of it yourself, it's rightwingnews.com or .org or whatever it is. Yeah, it's .com. And you look up 20 reasons you wouldn't want to live in an America controlled by liberals like Obama. Feel free, go in, snark away, have fun. Beware of the comments. I'm already seeing the first comment. We've got to take our country back before it's too late. It's like, really? Really? <laughs> Those kinds of people. They, 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 just, they just make me just want to facepalm. And, and, you know, they make me want to facepalm so hard that my glasses become embedded in my face. That's how hard. Oh, so, and, and of course, all the artwork could have to change because I could never take off my glasses ever. <laughs> oh. So with that, it's a little bit over time, at least a little bit. But, uh, you know, we had to get through that because we figured you all would enjoy it. And we had fun. Hope you guys had fun, too. So if we wanted to find Gonzo Link on the social medias and the stuff, where could we find him? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr at Gonzo Link. I also am on the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne, and I also have my own podcast, Focus on the Frames, which I host with Zenith Wool Rule. It's a movie, uh, podcast where we talk about movies. You can find that on focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com and on Zenith's YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. Sweet. And where can we find Miss Holly Christine? You can find me all sorts of places as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y, G-O-X. And so that's Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of things. Um, you can find me at Facebook at Holly Christine Brown. That's my fan page. And you can find me over at NerdVice. Yay! And if you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you like our shows and, and you want to help support us financially, throw a little money our ways to help with better equipment, better recording space to where we don't have to worry about children getting into the recording very so often, <clears throat> that sort of thing there, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. Now, Pledge as much or as little as you want, as often as you want, and every little bit is going to help. And in fact, I'm proud to say that a few of the productions that I have done over the past couple of months have been because of my patrons. So, hooray! It, it, it does make a difference. And speaking of making a difference, I would be totally remiss if I did not also mention my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who, if you're watching this on the YouTube, you are seeing her fabulous artwork right there in your face. If you want something like that, go over to her Patreon, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Toss some money at her. You can get some fabulous artwork. Or if you throw enough money at her, she will do a an awesome 30 second animation for you and it's very it is really awesome too because she is an award winning animator so yay yes so go get some artwork from her you know help us both out patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x and patreon.com slash becky hop thank you guys for listening we will catch you next time and until then this is gomer the ranting thespian with holly christine and gonzo link signing off bye See ya. Again, in three, two, one. If I bring up my page right. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Gomer. Uh, when, you, when you do the countdown, make sure you have your page ready. That, yeah. That's a good thing. Okay, try it again. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.